Hello students, uh, in the previous class I started with bifurcation theory but uh, not in detail. So, I, I wanted to give one example on a closed circuit. Um, so, we saw that uh, uh, the Poincare Benedictine theorem uh, how it talks about uh, um, the the boundedness of the solution and uh, based on which we also obtained uh, something related to closed circuit. But uh, today we will actually start uh, in detail about uh, uh, bifurcation theory. I will give you some uh, introduction and uh, some motivation behind it and then we will um, look into some results and uh, examples associated with it. So, basically uh, consider the autonomous system like uh, we had in the previous class. So, let us see x dot equals to uh, f of x comma mu right. So, here uh, uh, basically we have uh, so this is uh, call it at equation number 1 and this is um, autonomous equation and autonomous equation with a k dimensional Dimension, dimensional parameter parameter right now let's uh, call this as equation number 1 where f is mapping from d that is a subset of rn to uh, rn with a d dimensional open subset with a d dimensional open subset of R n cross R n for some k greater equal to 1. Now, um, we know that I mean if you have a parameter involved then your solution will definitely depend upon this parameter. So, um, we know that we know that um, the solution the solution of 1 depends on the parameter mu the parameter mu which is basically our mu 1, mu 2, mu 3 up to mu k you can think of transpose. So, in fact, um, in fact if our f belongs to set of all continuous function map uh, from defined on d um, and the values are in R n and is locally Lipschitz and is locally Lipschitz continuous locally Lipschitz locally Lipschitz in x uh, then the solutions solution of any initial value problem i v p any initial value problem associated with 1 associated with 1 uh, depends on mu continuously depends on mu continuously. So, this is also a very standard result and uh, I mean in, in uh, any ODE book you can find the proof right. So, then it will depend continuously on mu. Now, this uh, uh, result or this theorem um, actually uh, characterizes that uh, if you have any parameter involved in a um, ordinary differential equation or in let us say even in partial differential equation, then the properties of that solution will depend on this parameter right. So, it may happen that the solution for so some properties like uh, the solution whether it uh, exists on the entire time interval or not or uh, whether it exists globally or not that will actually depend on what property this mu has where this mu is defined and all that right. So, this is one such um, um, uh, problem one such a situation where we really have to uh, incorporate the property of this uh, parameter that is given to us. So, in um, uh, so basically uh, it does not. So, basically 
um, here what we have is that uh, the, the, the result shows that the result tells the result tells us that um, the continuous behavior continuous behavior of individual solution individual solution on compact interval on compact interval intervals of the maximal interval of existence when the parameter mu varies when the parameter mu varies right so that means due to the, you have a maximal uh, interval of existence but based on the property of mu that maximal interval of existence will change however it is not telling us how the solution uh, will look like right so uh, al although it is depending upon mu um, we cannot say that uh, the form of the solution or the type of uh, the way the solution will actually change so the dependence part is clear but in what sense or uh, like what is what will be the expression of the solution that we don't know um, or that with this that result doesn't provide right so the changes in the uh, phase so basically if you have a system uh, of uh, first order od so basically uh, the change of the phase portrait when the parameter mu varies that's all we know right but uh, like what way it is changing uh, that this result uh, basically uh, doesn't tell us so for example uh, let us consider uh, this uh, second order equation so a simple second order differential equation for mechanical vibration that means of this type m x double dash c x dash plus k x so equals to 0 let us call this as equation number 2 so where m is the mass where m c and k represent mass uh, of the vibrator mechanical vibrator uh, the damping coefficient or the damping constant and uh, the spring constant and uh, the spring constant all right spring constant respectively so the solution basically the solution of two uh, that is xt uh, the solution xt uh, the solution xt of two um, represents the displacement represents the displacement of the mechanical vibrator displacement of the vibrator, uh, right. So, from any uh, book on elementary um, uh, differential equation, we can find out the solution, and uh, um, so we can find the solution of the uh, equation two of the equation 2 and uh, the solution structure and the solution structure. So, this is uh, mechanical vibrator or harmonic oscillator whatever you want to call uh, and the solution structure and the solution structure becomes uh, very different becomes very different different uh, when the values when the values of m c and k changes right so for example um, in uh, in undamped uh, notion so in undamped uh, motion uh, when c is equals to 0 when c is positive sorry 
and uh, c square minus 4. Uh, so, when undamped notation uh, notion uh, motion c is positive and c square minus 4 m k is less than 0 uh, critically damped critically damped motion then it is uh, critically damped motion then it is uh, c is positive and uh, uh, no for uh, wait a minute for undamped motion we have uh, when c is uh, equals to 0 for undamped motion we have c equals to 0 and uh, for uh, 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 when when c is positive uh, when c is positive uh, c is positive and c square minus 4 m k is less than 0 then we have uh, critically uh, then we have um, critically damped and uh, when c is positive and uh, c square minus 4 m k is 0 um, then we have uh, then we have uh, c positive and uh, we will have wait a minute c square minus 4 m k as uh, positive let me just verify so in so we have uh, under uh, we have uh, under damped motion when under damped motion when c is positive c square minus 4 m k is less than so sorry this one was correct so c is c is positive and c square minus 4 m k is less than 0 then critically damped then uh, we have uh, c is positive c square minus 4 m k is equals to 0 and uh, over damped over damped over damped motion when c is positive and c square minus 4 m k is also positive. So, basically depending upon um, this uh, several values of m c and k we can say that whether the motion is uh, under damped uh, un, um, under damped or undamped uh, critically damped and over damped right. So, in a given um, let us say harmonic oscillator or uh, mechanical vibrator equation um, depending upon what kind of m c and k that is given we can say that whether the motion is under damped over damped or critically damped. So, parameter involvement in the solution I mean it is a second order OD. So, you can easily write down the solution. Now, from the solution depending upon m c k we can draw all those properties all, all those um, uh, definitions that I just mentioned. But it shows that uh, the involvement of parameter is heavily important when you are characterizing the solution. So, the bifurcation theory basically uh, the bifurcation theory the bifurcation theory is concerned is concerned with the following problem with the following problem what is that for a general autonomous system for a general autonomous system uh, or simply equations equations with parameters with parameters how the topological structure how the topological structure um, of the phase portrait 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 changes when the parameters changes when the parameters change right. So, bifurcation theory is nothing but it is actually inquiring or saying that um, whatever changes in the phase portrait I mean how the topological uh, structure of the phase portrait of an autonomous system changes when you are varying these um, parameters when you are varying these constants that are involved in your model. So, 
formal definition should go like this. So, the formal definition goes like this if the phase portrait if the phase portrait phase portrait we have already defined in pre predator equations and, and um, so phase portrait of uh, equation 1 undergoes a structural change a structural change at mu is equals to mu 0 say. So, then we say that a bifurcation a bifurcation has occurred or occurs at mu is equals to mu 0 and uh, mu is equals to mu 0 is called the bifurcation value. of equation 1. So, such structural changes structural changes include a change of the number of equilibria Second is a change of the type or stability, stability of any equilibrium. Third is a change of the number of closed orbits and the fourth criteria is a change of the orbital stability of any closed orbit. and many more of course. Any other structural changes that we can observe that can be included in here. So, any phase portrait the phase portrait the way we have plotted. So, any phase portrait the of equation 1 that undergoes a structural change right. So, if it goes a structural change uh, let us say at uh, due to any one of these parameters that are involved in the model. So, that particular value let us say mu is equals to mu, uh, mu equals to mu 0 that particular uh, point uh, or uh, let us say parameter value is called as the bifurcation value and we say that there is a bifurcation that has occurred there. That means, there is some kind of disturbance that is being uh, created due to the presence of that parameter or due to the involvement of that parameter um, in the phase portrait. Right. So, uh, one example we can look definitely. Uh, so, consider this equation. So, example 1 uh, x dash uh, or x dot. So, this is basically our dx dt equals to mu minus x k where k is any natural number. Right. Uh, let us call it as equation number 1. So, what happens if k is an odd number? If k is an odd number. So, if k is an odd number then basically uh, equation 1 has 1 exactly exactly 1 equilibrium point equilibrium point if k is odd right. So, from here we will get only one equilibrium point that is x 0 mu is equals to kth root of mu right for each mu for each mu belonging to set of all real number. And uh, moreover it is easy to see that f of x mu that means, the right hand side is greater than 0 for all x less than 
x 0 mu and uh, f x at mu is less than 0 for all x greater than x 0 mu. Therefore, x 0 mu is asymptotically stable, asymptotically stable for every mu belonging to r the, because at uh, x 0 mu equals to kth root of mu we can see that when x is greater than x 0 mu then f x uh, f x comma mu is less than 0 when it is uh, less than x 0 comma x 0 mu then it is uh, then f of x comma mu is positive. So, that means this is basically your um, asymptotically stable point right for every mu in r and uh, this means that. So, this means that um, this means that no bifurcation no bifurcation occurs at any mu at any mu in r when k is positive right. So, for example, if you plot this, uh, so this is x, this is uh, f and uh, this will be something like like this. So, this is your um, bifurcation point. So, this side, this side. So, that means when x 0 is less than x is less than x 0 mu, then we have f positive. When x is um, uh, greater than x 0 mu, then it is uh, negative and therefore, we have only one equilibrium point and that is uh, that showing that uh, there is no bifurcation for any value of mu. Now, similarly, when uh, k is um, even, so let us look at the case when k is even. So, k is an even number. So, then what will happen? Then equation 1 has uh, no equilibrium points, no equilibrium points when mu is less than 0 because then it will become imaginary right. So, it will have no equilibrium points. So, basically it will have uh, equilibrium points at uh, x 0. So, basically uh, exactly 1 exactly 1 equilibrium point when uh, mu is 0 equilibrium equilibrium point that is x 0 equals to uh, equals to 0. Uh, when mu is 0 right so, when mu is 0 and uh, exactly 2 equilibrium points when mu is positive equilibrium points when mu is positive makes sense right when mu is 0 then x is 0 that is one equilibrium point and uh, when mu is positive and let us say k is 2 then you will get always plus minus. So, plus minus square root of mu plus minus uh, uh, that accounts as two equilibrium points. So, basically when mu is 0, so then what will happen? So, when mu is 0, then uh, f of x comma mu is less than 0 for both um, x less than x 0 uh, 0 and uh, x greater than x 0 0 because mu is 0. So, that means minus of x to the power some even. So, it does not matter whatever you consider it, this is always less than 0. So, therefore, so x 0 comma mu is unstable is unstable uh, more specifically more specifically um, more specifically we say that we may say that we may say that x 0 uh, 0 is unstable is unstable from the left from the left and uh, asymptotically stable asymptotically stable from the right ok and uh, when mu is positive uh, when mu this is case 2 when mu is positive 
then what will happen? When mu is positive, then I will have f of t comma mu is less than 0 for x less than uh, x minus mu and uh, x greater than x plus mu. And uh, so, x minus x plus is that plus minus value and uh, f t uh, comma mu is positive for x minus mu is less than x and uh, x less than x positive mu. So, basically x minus mu is unstable and uh, x positive is asymptotically stable. is asymptotically stable. So, basically we note that both the number and the stability of the uh, equilibrium points uh, changes due to the change in the value of mu. right? So, this um, stability just, just to check the stability of this equation, um, we can see that uh, the values of mu actually determines when the solution will become stable, asymptotically stable and so on. So, for example, um, uh, we can also draw this. So, basically uh, this is our x, this is our f. So, in case of uh, mu less than 0, then uh, we have uh, mu less than 0, then we have no equilibrium, no equilibrium and uh, when we are um, so this is when mu is equals to 0, then we have one equilibrium point and uh, this is when when mu is positive, then we have two equilibrium points, equilibrium points but uh, as we see one is uh, unstable another one is asymptotically stable so just the stability of the equation itself um, uh, can be uh, dependent on this uh, parameter mu right and that's what uh, bifurcation theory is all about there can be several other examples so for system of equations uh, we can also check um, uh, for example uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to derive it but i'm just going to give you this uh, for verification purpose so x1 dash equals to a x1 plus uh, b x2 and then x2 dash equals to c x1 plus d x 2, where you can think of it as x dash equals to a x. So, basically x equals to x 1 x 2 and your matrix A is a b c d. right? So, this type of equation. Now, here in this case, uh, basically you can check the stability and um, all those things for this equation at uh, this system of equation and it will heavily depend on all these four parameters that are involved in this equation. right? So, like this uh, there can be uh, other uh, different types of equation where you may have involvement of more than one parameter and uh, we have to check whether the solution is stable or unstable or global existence um, bounded or not and things like that. So, it involves uh, what kind of um, bifurcation you have, what kind of involvement of the parameter uh, parameters you have in your equation. right? So, in our next class, um, so I will definitely talk about the closed orbits and uh, um, all those things uh, in the coming classes on uh, bifurcation theory. So, in the next class, we will start with uh, one dimensional uh, bifurcation uh, scalar equation, then we will go to the two dimensional and then we go to uh, Hopf bifurcation. right? So, these are the three main topics that I will touch and in between I will talk about what is closed orbit. So, we have introduced this uh, several, uh, we have used this, uh, but uh, um, I will show one example where you can see how to derive or how to obtain this closed orbit. Um, so, I will um, cover all these things in the coming classes. So, thank you for your attention and I will see you in the next class.